Jones here from Metal Monkey Media, and um, just thought I'd give you an update on a couple of things. Um, I believe in, I don't even know if I've posted the video yet actually. So, if I haven't posted it, what we're going to have a look at today is my newest acquisition, which was a Remington um, 700 police light tack rifle with 20 inch barrel. Um, when I got it, it had a very nice HS Precision stock, and it's not the cheap one, it's the one with the really big aluminium bedding block, and it had a really nice composite stock. Um, I really should have taken some photos of that. We, we will have a look at that. But what I decided to do was rip the Magpul Hunter stock off my 223 and whack it onto the 308, just to give it a bit more, you know, adjustable comb height, length of pull, all that sort of stuff, and the stock's already set up for me. And what my goal is ultimately to see how this thing goes in a long-range precision match, like a long-range tack. So between three and 900 metres over the next 12 months. <coughs> the build's about 90% complete. I want to upgrade the bipod. I don't really know what I'm going to get yet. I was thinking maybe an Atlas, if I could find funds, or potentially a Harris 6 to 9. Uh, either ways, um, something, you know, pretty decent. As it is now, it's just got a really nasty high score on there, which I'm not overly a fan of, and it'll do the job, but uh, for competition, I think it'll get um, out the door. So, give you a quick look at it. Pretty sweet. So, the Magpul stock set up with Enlock Kitty um, sling swivels, top and back. It has a rail on it. I'm probably not going to mount anything on that. We've got the high school bipod. This is a five round AI spec PMAG. Now, I've got some MDT ones coming for 10 rounders, but for testing purposes, this will do the job. Got the faithful old Basker 6 to 24 by 40 SWAT, and I am probably going to upgrade that to my IOI scope, which I'm buying off a of mate, once I finish paying for it. Got the Leopold Mark IV QD rings, and the KRG oversized bolt handle. Now, you will note on this that the barrel is fluted. So you probably might not be able to see it, but yeah, there you go, so you can see the flutes. It's not as deep as some of their Barmet rifles, but it does increase the surface area a little bit. Does it work? I don't know. Some people think the flutes actually make the barrel not cool evenly and all that sort of stuff. I don't care. We'll just see how it goes. Um, basically, what these are is a, a 700 Barmet. This isn't 308, by the way. And... I've got a sneaking suspicion that this isn't an Xmark Pro trigger because it's not externally adjustable. I've got to do some research on that. And I'll put that in the Anyways, the bolt's quite smooth. It almost feels like it's been lapped. And it is very 700-ish. I'm quite impressed with the trigger. It's probably a little bit heavier than I would like, but it's not bad, and I'll work out how to adjust it and take it down. Overall, the gun is quite short. Like you're looking at, compared to my Savage, my Savage would be another four to six inches on top of that. It's got a one in 12 twist. Um, personally, I prefer a one in 10, but uh, that being said, I've talked to a few people and apparently these things can digest just about everything from 155 grains to 175, so we'll see how we go. And I'll be using a 155 grain dyer, HSBC projectile, which I've had a fair bit of success with in recent times. I have high hopes for it, and 
I'm hoping that it will help improve my scores and give me a little bit of confidence. My other plan is this will be a really nice uh, hunting rig. So take big heavy tax scope off, drop on a nice light three or nine or something like that, and that should make it a pretty decent scrub and pig gun. It's got a parkerized finish. It does have target style recessed crown. And I had a look down the barrel of this thing when I picked it up yesterday, and it's like a mirror. It's really nice. Whoever's had it before me, it looked after it extremely well. And I would just like to say a big shout out to Darren, the guy I bought it from. Thanks, man. I'm really happy with my purchase. Um, hoping today maybe to be able to sneak off and do a little bit of um, testing. If I can um, be bothered, you know, got a knee and a brace at the moment because I slipped off the skateboard. Don't do that. Don't play with your kids' toys. You will only hurt yourself. The Magpul MS3 sling, um, set up with the QDs, lug at the back, power clip at the front. Yeah, so my initial impression is I really like it. Now, while I was pissing around last night doing this and having an absolute bastard of a time slotting my 700 2D3 back into the O Gilly Green stock, which is really nice actually, I quite like this. Um, I'm thinking about having this inlet for a 10 round bottom metal. I'm not sure if I'm gonna do it yet. And you can see it's just pillar bedded. There's no block in there. I'm just a bit worried that if I do start chunking stuff out of there, it's gonna weaken the stock. So, see what happens, I'll think about it. But anyways, I was sitting there last night thinking, what am I going to do with this really nice HS Precision stock that's coming to Remington? And I thought, Tony, you should sell it. You could probably get a couple hundred bucks for it. And I thought, you know what? Fuck that. I'm going to keep it. So I woke up this morning with an epiphany. You know what? My 2 to 3 would look really good in that stock and should drop straight in. And lo and behold, that's exactly what happened. So I'll post some other photos of what it looked like previously and I'll, I um, popped a KRG off it, the oversized bolt handle, and it's now on the LTR, but I do have another one coming in Desert Tan, which will probably look a bit weird, but hey, shit happens. So this one has a dirty great big chunk of aluminium in there, in that area and you screw down onto it, it's machined to meet face to face with the base of the rifle action and with very little tolerances, and very fine tolerances. So I put the 3 to 9 minox back on it. Oh sorry, no, that's my AR. Still not 100% convinced this thing's rooted yet and I just want to play with it. Once again, 25mm loophole rings, uh, the others are 30 on the Basca. QDs, Mark 4s. We've got the Evolution Gunworks. Zero MOA rail with the scope and the rings on. And other than that, ah, once as always, the PWS triad nozzle brake, which is quite low, well, flash height or whatever you want to call it, which I quite like. It's um, given the gun a little bit more heft than it had before, but I do like the appearance. And once again, we're dealing with a 16 inch barrel. Um, as always with this particular model, this is an SPS tactical. I really like the suppressor for it. Being as we're in Australia, and that's a no-no. Don't think it'll mm, pardon me, happening anytime soon. So I'm also keen to muck around with this a little bit more. It's an interesting piece of kit. I really like the stock. I thought, you know what, you should inlet that for 10 rounds, for a 10 round bottom metal as well. And while the idea appeals to me, I'm probably going to keep a stock standard for a little while and HS Precision actually make a bottom metal and sweet as. The only problem is, I think it uses proprietary mags. I don't think they're AR spec. Got to do some research on that. I'm not sending them out. I'll ask them. 
Other than that, like I said, it's probably increased the heft a little bit from the standard Gilly stock, simply because it's got a half pound of aluminium, still got a lot of pound of aluminium stuck right in the middle of it, and it is composite Kevlar and fiberglass. It's really nice. It just feels good. Two sling slivers, one at the back, so you could sling on, sling on, whack a bike pot onto it. Do I like it? Mm-hmm. Um, just a little bit moist at this point in time. It feels good, it looks good, and if you really want to shoot it, like now. But being as I live in suburbia, I'll probably get the first one away, but after that the cops will be rocking me. Anyways, enough of that. My name's Tony Jones. This has been a Metal Monkey Media production. Um, thank you to everyone that has liked and shared and subscribed. I do try and put videos on a regular basis, but sometimes it's just not possible. Um, in the next couple of months, I'm going to start doing a bit of a thing on service rifles because I'm primarily a service rifle shooter. Um, I am new to this whole long range tactical weapon game, um, but I'm having a lot of fun with it. But we'll start doing having a bit of a look at. Um, you know, your Lee Enfield, your some of your Mauser models. Um, Darren has kindly offered to loan me his VKT so we can have a look at that, which he's picking up soon. And a few other things like the part is tactical um, stuff that I think you'll be interested in. It's not going to be a world shattering or anything like that. I'm also going to try and get a few people from my club to come on who are, shall we say, um, Accomplished service rifle shooters, much better than me. These are the guys that continually take out first, second, third. They're the guys that are there every weekend. And remember, if you want to get better at this stuff, you've really got to try and get out there <clears throat> on a really regular basis just to improve your skill level. I don't have the time at this point, but I'm hoping as the years progress and my kids get bigger that we can do that. So that's the plan. It is subject to change, but that's what I'm hoping to do. Anyways, once again, thanks for watching. Um, it is Friday, uh, Father's Day on Sunday, so if there's any ladies watching uh, and your spouse is a bit of an outdoorsman or a fisherman or a shooter or whatever, get him something nice. Don't get him socks and hankies, okay? Um, you don't have to spend a lot of money, but get him something he can use. He'll really appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Catch you later. Have a great weekend and a happy Father's Day to all the dads out there.